How far from the person that you want to be has your addiction taken you? Like, let's start with the reality of that. But what is my sobriety for? What What is my healing for? What am I doing with it? The art of storytelling is is the primary way that the human brain in, takes input information. This arc happens in Star Wars and The Lord of the Rings and Superman. We have learned to be compassionate towards other people, but not to have compassion towards ourselves. then I think we're missing the heart of Jesus. True or false, you end up with a superhuman ability after you go through these two chapters. Because the superpower, you know, isn't masturbation. Oh, wow. Yeah, that one. Yeah, moving along. Bob Vandermeer, welcome back to the podcast, my friend. It has been a while. We're glad to have you back. Yeah, thanks for having me back. It's great to be here. Yes. You're not sick. Everything's fine. It's just been a little bit. And so we're great to yeah. have you back. It's not like anything tragic has happened, yeah. but... We are, uh, yeah, we're glad to have you back. And you have a session after this, so you can't be here in office in the studio, which we're I like a little, little sad-ish um, for some of us, but it's okay. Um, but with our time today, in the last year or so, we've released a new resource called The Compassionate Warrior. And you, Bob, had the opportunity to be a contributor uh, with Dr. Ted, with Diane, um, on this. And so we wanted to lean in and just talk about the resource, what it is, who it's for, all of that. Um, knowing that maybe there are some people who follow our ministry or have listened to the show that aren't aware of this product. So we want to make sure that they're aware of it and talk through what's included. So uh, for honestly years, I think the story I've heard four years, I've heard five years, I've heard seven years that Dr. Ted Dr. Ted Roberts, who's including Diane Roberts and you, Robert, and I realize that's a lot of Roberts that are mixed up in there. It's perfect. Uh, Have been working on the Compassionate Warrior for a long time. Um, But just flat out, what is this resource and why was it a need for men in recovery? Yeah, yeah. Uh, You know, I think a lot of the ideas that are in there are things that uh, Dr. Ted has been, you know, stewing on, percolating on uh, some other cooking analogy on (laughs) for a long time. And it was, I feel like it was maybe six to seven years ago that we had a counselor's like annual meeting where we're doing some continuing education. And, and Ted was like, hey, we need to write this book. <laughs> and, uh, and then, yeah, a lot of work and love and sweat and tears went into it since then. And so you know, the, the book is, it's a, a, a workbook um, right, as well as weekly tools. And, and really the, it's, Meant as a follow up to seven pillars, but it's it really, I think, and, and obviously you guys have I'd love to hear how you phrase this, like just continuing down the road, right? It's for, for guys that have already been in recovery for a while. They've been working through things, trauma, learning tools, gaining sobriety, but it's kind of like, how do we continue that? How do we perpetuate it? And for a lot of guys, they get to a place after the seven pillars where they are kind of like, what's next? Then they feel a little stalled out. And so, you know, wanting to build more durability in their recovery around sobriety, but then also just like emotional health. Um, and so the, this resource, the Compassionate Warrior, really helps like them in that moment. And um, and it does it in a really cool way to help them help, help guys see themselves in their own story, right? Kind of in this creating a coherent narrative. Yeah, I remember, Bob, when I came on staff, it was probably about the time you were hearing about this resource for the first time at a counselor's team meeting, and I was hearing about it from Ted directly, like, we're going to write this this workbook, and, and I'm like, great, let me know when you got a rough draft, and we'll we'll talk it over. And, and it went through many, many iterations, but what I recall uh, going back, so yes, it's the answer to the question, well, what should I do after seven pillars? What, what How do I continue my growth? Well, the compassionate warrior is that next phase, but what I think really prompted uh, Dr. Ted, and we talked about this a little bit on the initial podcast when we launched The Compassionate Warrior, is Ted was seeing guys come back to him after a year or two of sobriety and yet acknowledge they were still stuck in something. And and sometimes having maybe a relapse down the road or not necessarily relapse, but just feeling like they'd gotten stalled out in their recovery. And Ted 
really was developing the idea then of the five brain bugs is what I heard him start to talk about. And, and those yeah. are incorporated into this workbook. But for him, the bugs weren't, you know, crittering, you know, little insects, but bugs were like in a computer system that when something clogs mm -hmm. down your whole process and system and you just can't get stuff to work, he felt like that was happening for men in recovery, that there would be this initial phase of sobriety, of momentum, of freedom. It's like really addressed, the behavior itself got addressed, but there were deeper issues that, you know, one time through seven pillars hadn't given guys enough time to really develop that renewed mind, that new way of thinking. And he was just seeing some of these consistent areas where guys were getting stuck mm -hmm. um, after that initial year of sobriety. And so I do think it's an appropriate next layer of healing to say, as you've learned the principles of seven pillars, you know, you've understood some of your trauma, you've understood the lies that you listened to because of your trauma, you can see the ways that you've learned to cope and medicate uh, pain in your life and the pattern you can get stuck in. Like some of those initial pieces are needed. Yeah. This is then going deeper into your story, deeper into where you yeah. might be getting stuck or hung up so that you can really pursue healing in another season of life um, as yeah. you go into those deeper things. And I know that we'll get into it a little bit with you, Bob, but um, we get into like story work in the sense of like, not just processing the story from the past, but what does the rest of your life look like um, in mm -hmm. health? What does the legacy you're creating look like? And uh, I think that that's what makes this one unique as well, is that it's, you know, that continuation. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of, a lot of guys are like, I'm doing all this stuff, right. I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. Like, uh, but I'm, I'm still like not to the place that I want to be. In. Yeah. And, um, right, that's, I think what a lot of us experience in a lot of areas of health. Yeah. So as we're mentioned, Bob, that this is the follow-up resource to seven pillars of freedom. Uh, what would you say though is different about this workbook and this journey, uh, and makes it unique compared to, what men may have experienced in the seven pillars of freedom. Yeah. Um, I mean, seven pillars uh, of freedom is it follows um, a task oriented or a task centered model. Right. And uh, in the way that it's laid out and, 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 the, and the, the ideas behind it, very um, adjacent to Patrick Karn's work with uh, task centered recovery. And so there's, there's a lot of tasks, right? There's steps that we're working through, in that and we're, we're introduced in the seven pillars to a lot of great clinical tools and solid theology and the confluence of those two things right and getting it to be um, uh, um getting guys to dive in really maybe for the first time uh into some of that deeper work but in the compassionate warrior it follows more of this narrative structure yeah and we'll unpack that more in some following questions but it follows this narrative and it's diving deeper into the person's own story with them as the main character. And, uh, you know, it, these other tasks and tools and seven pillars are phenomenal, right? There's, a, you get a lot of stuff. I mean, but this, this is kind of taking all of that foundational work they've done and putting it into this new character arc for them. Um, and that the idea of a coherent narrative is really, really important in, in recovery. And, and I think the Compassionate Warrior does that really well. Yeah. I think too, like, and I have yet to actually go through the resource. Maybe I was part of the, you know, review process and all of that when it came out. But just thinking about what does it look like for me to be a holistically healthy person, um, and what does, uh, what does my best self look like uh, in these areas? And I know some of it, it has to do with like emotional health and understanding that and how I process through that. Where I think, you know, even my first couple times through Seven Pillars was really focused on stopping of a, a behavior where a compassionate warrior kind of helps you think about also how you're crafting this new life that you have. And I feel like that's something yeah. that a lot of us lose sight of. We talked about this a lot on the show. Um, and I know our friend Jay Stringer has mentioned some stuff like that, that, you know, people who struggle with unwanted sexual behavior tend to lack vision for their life or purpose. And I think that this resource is a part of helping you craft that purpose, what that looks like, that you're not just this recovering addict, but that you also have a future and you have passions, you have things that the Lord has crafted you for. And I think that it just kind of casts that vision a little bit more. Yeah, I think a little bit of the illustration of like a construction project. And right now there's a huge housing project going on across the street from my house. So it's on my mind a lot and there's beeping trucks <laughs> right. every morning. A constant illustration. Uh, yeah, but you know, when, when you start a construction project with just bare ground, you know, it's it's kind of the chaos of addiction. Like things don't make sense. You're doing the stuff you wish you didn't want to do. Like there's just nothing there that's helpful. And in the seven pillars of freedom, it's like you clear the ground, you put in the foundation, you get the framework for the house. 
And it's, it is so much progress. It is so much better. It's like, oh my gosh, they're like, this looks like a house now. But if you drive by construction, you know, there's all the stages where it looks like a house, but it's a long way from complete. Mm -hmm. Like there's still no windows, there's no doors. It still needs shingles and siding and paint and like all the things that make it look like a home. You'd say, oh, I want to live there because now yeah. it looks ready. In some ways, Seven Pillars is that framework. And I think the Compassionate Warrior is kind of putting the life into that framework. As you said, Bob, like understanding your story. Um, in the Seven Pillars, you probably identified some trauma, which for a lot of us as men was maybe the first time we even considered we had much trauma um, and, and we started to understand it. Well, the compassionate warrior, you're going to, you're going to start to frame that as part of your story and understand deeper, maybe the lies you listen to and how that's impacting other parts of your story and then processing, how do I then take that into my relationships or into my marriage? And what does it look like for me to unravel some of those false patterns that I've learned and begin to relate to people in healthier ways. And, and how do I get other people's help around me to mentor yeah. me and, and guide me along that process? Because I am, I am still a long ways away from, you know, completed. And, and we've talked about, we're always in process, but I think the compassion warrior is just, it's going to start to put some, some new life and texture and form to good pieces that are there, but mm -hmm. aren't quite, uh, uh, to a place of completion or of being, um, really something that will be your new pattern. I know that was Ted's heart too in this. He said, he wants to make sure this becomes a guy's new pattern for life. Mm -hmm. And I think Seven Pillars sets you up for that, but it doesn't yeah. maybe give you the keys to make it a new normal for yeah. a lifelong pattern. So that's really, I think, what's happening in The Compassionate Warrior. Mm. Yeah, that's a great analogy. Um, I'm, I'm going to use another one in a couple of questions, but uh, <laughs> like, it's like it's like there's there's, you know, let's say Seven Pillars gives you a house compassionate warrior gives you a home mm. right like give, yeah so it gives you this outer structure and if i heard you right compassionate warrior gives you shingles that was one of the things <laughs> on the well let, let's <laughs> not go too oh, far with that wow one. yeah no, that, that one okay. yeah uh, moving along. <laughs> but it's like but it but compassionate warrior it like it fills it fills it fills the shell yeah. and it makes it someplace where you're living mm -hmm. right yeah it's a great analogy uh nick that like it's it yeah it's like the, putting the like you, you need all the fixtures in the house, right? You can yeah. have a kitchen, but you can have light in there. You have to be able to. So it's like you're you're putting these these really like livable, long mm -hmm. um, term things into the hard work that you've already been doing and building the structure yeah. of sobriety and health. Yeah, yeah. So one of the primary themes of Compassionate Warrior is the hero's journey, or because it's, it's Doctor Ted, he calls it the way of the warrior. I love it. It's just so Doctor Ted. Um, what is the hero's journey or the way of the warrior and how is this theme helpful in our continued journey of recovery? Yeah, Joseph Campbell uh, came up with this idea of um, of the the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. And in the hero's journey, uh, you know, there's um, this idea that that everyone and, and he, he, he looked at literature and he looked at, at kind of the narrative of literature and to see the character arc really that people were going on and, and the journey that they were on in their own individual work. And, um, and what was really incredible with that, he, he wrote a book called the hero of a thousand faces, just to say that we're all in this same trope. Right. And, and yeah. like all in the same, like humanity is in this ubiquitous journey where we're all like, we all born and we all die. And really like this journey of relationship and struggle and shame and everything in between those two bookended events is the same for us. And, you know, he saw it in literature, but that was really this reflection of what was happening in humanity. And, um, and, it, and it, it really helped people to understand and to see themselves in the stories that they're reading, right? I mean, that's why we can associate with, with almost every character yep. in, in a book that we read or a movie that we watch. Um, uh, and then Ted, obviously, like you said, tweaked it to, um, to, to his own language, which, you know, Ted, Ted tweaks, that should be like maybe a whole other podcast, <laughs> right? Like Ted, Ted tweaks where he takes something <laughs> that was already phenomenal yeah. and like makes it better. Yeah, that's cool. Right. <laughs> like, um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, it's structured based off of Joseph Campbell's work, um, with the hero's journey and the hero of a thousand faces. 
Yeah, and it's one of the, I think, intriguing and fun elements for a lot of us in The Compassionate Warrior is that Ted does reference a lot of the big mm-hmm. uh, movie franchises that are out there and you start to piece together like, oh, wow, this is what happens. This arc happens in Star Wars and The Lord of the Rings and Superman and so many of the, yep. the Marvel uh, Avengers uh, comic and superheroes. It's like, th- this is a pattern that we kind of live through and then seeing through a biblical lens, that there's some truth to that for us as well, that, that yeah. we're learning to live in a different way. And in a sense, you know, becoming the hero of our own story because we're becoming someone that we can be proud of. You know, we, we've talked a lot on this podcast about, you know, Jesus said to love your neighbor as yourself and our ability to deeply engage in love of another person is very, very difficult if we don't know how to love and accept ourselves. Yeah how God has made us. And every one of us is made unique and has different skills and gifts and and character traits. But every one of us in a sense is like, I think designed by God to reflect his image and to be the hero of our own story. And that, I don't wanna get caught up in like performance or you know, winning, or it's not about success, but it's just about being comfortable in our own skin yeah. to be the main character in our own story. Like I'm, I need to live into the story God's brought me into. And that may mean going through this journey of accepting some things, of realizing limitations, but also risking and jumping Mm -hmm. into unknown things because I believe in the one who's calling me and leading me into something bigger than myself. And it just, you start to realize like there's something kind of hardwired into our thinking that this this journey I think represents. And then of course, you know, in Ted fashion, it's all coming back to scripture and what is God doing in our lives. And so I think it's, it's kind of a helpful framework that throughout the process, you can look back to the graphic we created and say, oh, okay, here's kind of where we are yeah. in this journey. And, and the difference is Bob was kind of mentioning, like pillars are, we call it pillars in, on purpose because we don't want to pe- for people to see them as steps. Like you got to do step one, step two. Like it's, yeah. these are all foundational elements. And in this regard, the journey is a little bit more progressive. Like here's yeah. some phases yeah. that we can start to look for in our journey and identify maybe where's the one we're most at right now, mm-hmm. but also have a picture of where we headed in the next phases of our journey. You know, there's been research done too that um, the art of storytelling is is the primary way that the human brain in, takes input information. Uh, so if you are to give someone a lecture or have them read, you know, a manual or something like that, they can, in, you know, digest that information, but they burn a lot of calories where you actually, you burn fewer calories and understand things at a deeper level when hearing, hearing things through story. And, uh, if people want to argue the research, I think you just need to go back and see, well, what did Jesus use to communicate? And it was story. And so I think that even on just like a human biological level, we are made with this framework built in that we are on this journey in the story. And so I, I think that that's what makes it most helpful is because you get to drop yourself in the story and get to kind of craft that too. It's cool. Uh, so Bob, for those that are maybe interested in the group or thinking about doing one at some point, talk us kind of through what's included in the resource, maybe some of the topics that they can expect to have covered and what what would their weekly work look like in the compassionate warrior, as opposed to what they may have experienced in a seven pillars of freedom group. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you said something, Nick, um, uh, and with this last, uh, topic or question that like, as the helping people to see themselves as the hero of their own story. Um, and I, one of the things I like about the compassionate warrior is it, is it, it hits the ground running in the intro. It asks really where you, where are you right now? Right. Like the very first question in the introduction is asking about where are you at? Like, let's start there. And the reality is, is though we might be the hero, you know, the main character of our of our whole story, we are not the hero of every scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And and starting out, where are you at? Let's just start there. Like, don't try and 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 like force yourself into being a hero right now because you might not be the hero right now. Right. And what's the first question of the first chapter uh, basically says, like, what are some of the craziest things you've done in your addiction, in your addictive behavior? So the very first question of chapter one is, let's like be honest, yeah. like, like how, how far from the person that you want to be has your addiction taken you? Like, let's start with the reality <laughs> of that and, and move forward from there. And, um, and so just, yeah, I mean, again, in, in, I think, Ted Fashion, but also in just the fashion of, of the placement of this resource in recovery is, let's just start out with some honest reflection on where you're at and also the reality of where you've been. And let's work forward from there. 
Um, because a lot of guys compare themselves in group, right? Like they're they're comparing themselves, even in compassionate warrior groups, they're like, well, I'm here, but other guys are there. And um, and not everybody's at the same place now, right? I mean, people don't start seven pillars at the same place. Yeah, they, no. we, we use an assessment called the sexual dependency inventory and, and the SAS, the sexual addiction screening test as mm-hmm. part of the seven pillars. Uh, but the score is there. If you score between six and 20, you're within the clinical range. Well, a six is way different than a 20. Totally. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so a lot of guys are like, well, I'm here, but they're there. What's wrong with me? Well, you might be a 16 and they might be an eight in that clinical range. Your journey's different. And so the compassionate warrior really helps guys to say, where are you right now? Let's start from there. And so, uh, you know, working through, uh, through that book, um, there's, there's a lot of, it's kind of like as if seven pillars is like, uh, let's just say, resetting a broken arm this is the the other analogy uh seven pillars is like resetting a broken arm and then putting a cast on it building some structure and then by the end of the book you get the cast taken off then compassionate warrior is like is like the the physical therapy that comes after right like and there's a lot of pain and a lot of hard work that goes into seven pillars but the physical therapy part of really going on to to live a a, a fruitful thriving life I feel like that's what compassionate warrior does does really really well yeah and so you know it's going to have you walk through difficult deep honest work um the same topics that you addressed in seven pillars you're going to address those here so you're going to address shame and, and relationship addiction identity all of the stuff really that you were doing in seven pillars but you're going to be doing it in a way that that isn't just about sobriety and addressing trauma for the first time but it's about about thriving, mm. right? Like you don't just want a broken arm so it's not broken. You want a broken arm so you can use it, and you want to be able to use it to actually do things that that lead to a fruitful life. So I feel like Compassionate Warrior takes all the same stuff that you've been doing, but it puts it into a even a more forward thinking perspective of of thriving. It's like Lazarus coming out of the tomb, right? right? Like he came out of the tomb, miracle. But then Jesus still has to say, untie him and let him go. Like Jesus didn't raise him from the dead to just stand there in a graveyard. Yeah. Right. He raised him from the dead to go and live a thriving life. And I feel like that's what Compassionate Warrior really does well. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of weekly work, too, I'd say there is a workbook. There are weekly tools. So it's a two workbook set like we have in a lot of our groups. And the the bulk of the work you'll do together uh, out of the workbook. And then we recommend groups still do a check in time and a commitment to change at the end. But because everybody's been through the seven pillars, I'm hearing that groups are able to navigate the check-in and the commitment to change faster. So it's not so much a 40, 60, 20 plan in terms of minutes. Uh, There may be more time spent on the workbook and the weekly tools isn't just your check-in and commitment to change. It also includes some, uh, what we'd call emotional growth opportunities, some learning tools. And uh, I've heard groups use it differently. So some groups will implement that as part of the workbook discussion time. And it might be more like a 20, 20, 60, 20 plan. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. They'll they'll spend some time on the weekly tools lessons there. And then other groups like the one I'm leading, I'm choosing to say to the guys like, hey, I'd, I'd rather we spend the bulk of our time in the chapters, the workbook itself. And if we have time, we'll discuss some of the weekly tools. But some weeks, depending on time, we, you know, we got a full group. We may not be able to prioritize that as much. That may be more uh, on your own or with a mentor or a friend. And so mm-hmm. I think there's a little bit of flexibility with that. But I'd say in general, you can expect the same approach of using a faster scale and some good questions to do a check-in, having a game plan by the end of the meeting to say, here's what I'm working on this week, and then spending the bulk of the time coming and processing the work that you've been doing during mm-hmm. the week out of the chapters. Because yeah. I think that pattern of bringing to group what I'm learning versus just coming to group and talking about a chapter yeah. is is really fundamental to, to the effectiveness of groups. And so that kind of component or pattern is is really, really similar to what you've seen in Seven Pillars. And I think that that's to be expected with you know Seven Pillars being something that's supposed to help you stop an unwanted behavior, understand why you're doing it, and help you you know, set the trajectory for where you want your life to go, this is going to look a little bit different. And I think that that's an okay expectation. Um, Bob, yeah. we... Uh, can, I, can, can I one more yeah, thing about please. the weekly work? Yeah, is, yeah even the, the, the check-in, uh, even the check-in questions are a little slimmed down from seven pillars, right? It asks about what your commitment to change is, 
Like, what have you done to improve relationship? Have you lied to anyone? And then faster scale stuff. So even that is a, is a little bit more, I don't know, aerodynamic, right? Like it's a little slimmed down, uh, which I think, Nick, to what you're speaking to is it helps to like, let's get to this other work, mm -hmm. right? Uh, even though you've been processing, yeah. it, it, it's continuing the same thought process that you did in seven pillars, right. but it's making it even more focused. Yeah. Yeah. Nice aerodynamic, different illustration. Yeah. Way to go guys. Uh, okay. So, um, Bob, one of the unique parts of this resource and, uh, I would say one of, I think from my vantage point, both as your friend and as someone who's been able to process kind of through this with you is one of the more unique and cool aspects is your contribution, uh, which is what you call the superhero odyssey. Uh, which yeah. I know is something that you've developed in your clinical work. And so talk us through like that. What is, um, what is it? How does this help men on their recovery journey? Yeah. 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 When, when Ted actually said, Hey, let's, let's like, let's work on a book. It was after I had presented this superhero odyssey to the clinical staff at this, at this retreat. And um, I think it, it fits really well into the compassionate warrior because the compassionate warrior at large is this character arc, this narrative the superhero odyssey is is kind of a, a smaller narrative within that larger narrative. And so the superhero odyssey really came out of just kind of, like you said, my clinical work where seeing how individuals, um, there were also mirrored events in superhero mutants, you know, whether whether we're talking Marvel or DC, whatever. Uh, but there's, there's this trope, again, there's these similar experiences around early childhood trauma, around difficulty in relationship, around discovering a way to navigate life while avoiding pain, right? Which is really what a lot of the superhero and mutant abilities, like superpowers become for those characters, is it, they're doing something outward that to navigate through life, right? Like being able to fly or having super strength. Um, but for a lot of them, they realize that if they, if they devote themselves to just that behavior, uh, which keeps them safe, maybe keeps the world safe around them. If they devote themselves to that, then they can't devote themselves to relationship and to their true identity. And, uh, and so worked into uh, the compassionate warriors, a couple chapters where we help guys build scenes from their life uh, to help them see how they've developed, like how their story is birthed out of this trauma. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and they, they develop these coping mechanisms other than sexual addiction because uh, the superpower, you know, isn't masturbation, right? The superpower is something other than their sexual addiction. Yeah. And so they've learned to do this to keep themselves safe. And so the way that it fits into the compassionate warrior also is, is that one of the stages in this, in the hero's journey is the threshold guardian. And the threshold guardian's role is to basically keep the main character, the, the protagonist from being able to, to move into and, and not only face this challenge, but also step into their identity. And, uh, and so what we see in these two chapters is that the threshold guardian for all of us in recovery is shame, right? We get to a place mm. where, where we've, we've, we've you know, experienced battles, we've overcome obstacles, competitors vested, right? And now we're at this place where like the last thing that we have to really, the biggest thing that we have to face is our own shame. And so the superhero odyssey just puts it into this, into the yeah. form of, of kind of a superhero, you know, superpower, um, but then helps you to see that really you're, the biggest thing you have to face is your own shame. So your own story. true or false, you end up with a superhuman ability after you go through these <laughs> two chapters. Is that correct? Am I understanding you correct? Um, so uh, great. This is a great time to plug Compassionate Warrior. You yeah. can purchase it. Uh, on our website <laughs> and you have to go through the book to find out there you go all right yeah. perfect you know, selling point cliffhanger seen. hey uh, i would i would say having empathy for others in today's day and age can be a superpower uh because it opens doors and relationships like boy few other things can and you know what i'd say i really appreciated about your chapters bob as i worked through them and got to chat with you about them was it gives guys an opportunity to see their story from a really a, a different lens and I think in, you know, in seven pillars were appropriately so just a little more factual based. We're like, okay, what led to what and how, how often and for how long and what was, you know, the nature of your struggle, you know, what was the, the maximum extent. Um, and you're, you're really kind of trying to put an factual narrative of your history. So you learn to be a truth teller and that's, that's honest and it's straightforward, 
but it doesn't always necessarily engage us in the level of putting our, you know, what we talk about, the cohesive narrative, put our whole story together, maybe see things that we've never seen before. And that's what I'm already hearing from guys that have been through those chapters. It's like, man, I, th- I thought I understood like the lie I listened to, but as I wrote that narrative and got creative and add, it's like yeah. adding these extra elements of kind of dr- the dramatic effect as Bob encourages you to, to think through it in kind and of a cinematic it. version of it. Mm-hmm. It's like the little details suddenly just become these spotlights on, I have never realized, you know, this part or how important that was to me. And, and, I, and that just makes total sense to me because what we talked about with the brain and the whole left brain, right brain thing that probably seven pillars had you more living in the left brain of the logic and the reason and what led to what A plus B equals C, where telling your story and writing it in this super, I mean, the, um, the superhero odyssey is much more right brain of spatial and yeah. emotional and color and sound and light and, yep. And it, it brings out different memories. And and because of that, yeah. new connections that I think are really propelling guys into healing. So I'm, I'm super excited to have guys go through those chapters. And if it starts your career in screenwriting, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. Bob yeah. would like a yeah. small royalty on your major blockbuster <laughs> uh, movie release. It's amazing. Yeah, thank you, Nick. I mean, you, I, I, I don't want to make this like a, a you know, I, I self-promotion of something yeah. I'm excited about. Right. But it is it's an immersive story building tool is how yeah. I describe it. And and some of the main goals are for you to be able to be an objective observer of your own story mm-hmm. uh, as if you were sitting in a movie theater watching this take place. And by doing that, we're able to as an objective observer, we're able to build empathy for ourselves. Mm-hmm. Right. And, to, and which is really for the main character. And so when I'm working through this tool with clients, uh, like I won't re- when we're talking about this, the scene they've developed, I won't say like, oh, yeah, so here Trevor does this. I'll say here the main character does this. Mm-hmm. Right. Like I want to help them to see this as an objective observer. And in the Hollywoodizing of these true events, yeah, they're, they're adding basically this the cinematic experience or the storytelling experience um, with lights and sound and camera angles and all this stuff that words can't communicate. Yeah. And Guillermo del Toro talks about uh, in movie, uh, in directing and writing, that if his goal isn't so much to recreate a truth as much as it is to recreate an emotional truth. Mm. And that's what this immersive tool does. It helps people to recreate an emotional truth yeah. in a way that they've never done it before. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Bob, give us uh, some thoughts about what what are the outcomes that might come from walking through this resource? What kind of fruit could a man hope to see in their lives uh, due to journeying through the compassionate warrior. Yeah. Um, I love that in the weekly tools, uh, book that, uh, many times in, in multiple weeks, there's a section called progress, not perfection. And, and I think that at the end of this, that hopefully there's still this idea that this is about progress and not perfection. You know, at, at the end of seven pillars, uh, if guys don't have the significant sobriety that they want, they can be really discouraged because it's like they're looking for perfection. And I think jumping into the compassionate warrior says, hey, this is a journey. And our goal is progress and not perfection. Perfection is in Christ. That's our justification. Yeah. Right. What we're engaged in um, is more about continued momentum. It's about trajectory, more durability and sobriety. Absolutely. That's part of it. Right. But I think what guys can expect is a deeper understanding of themselves, of their own trauma, of the nuances of things, yeah. like in, into the cracks of their heart that they've never gotten into before. Right. And and so in that better understanding of themselves, um, able to see themselves in their story better, really, again, there's this momentum and trajectory that says you're going to keep working on this for the rest of your life. But it can look different. Right. It doesn't have to be just this cold, harsh shell of a house. There can be a comfortable, thriving, relational home uh, inside of your recovery. Yeah. I think, too, that, um, you know, you guys have talked about it a number of times already, just, you know, developing empathy toward yourself, you know, especially as you go through and you're, you're crafting the cinematic look into your life. And I think that doing that creates curiosity and compassion for our, our own story and our own, and our own self, you know, like, I don't take a shaming and derogatory approach or tone when viewing my own life for my decisions. And curiosity and compassion lead to more self-awareness, which leads to more 
uh, ability, you know, to, to make changes, to see things how they are. And I think that that's something that, you know, I, I know growing up, you know, being the oldest of four boys and even growing up, you know, in the church as a man, like I'm told I have to be strong and have to seem like I have it all figured out. And at times that doesn't create a curious and compassionate, um, I guess just overall bent toward my story or who I am. And so I think that what it does is it creates a tenderness to understand that we are in process. And again, inside that story framework allows me to see that where I am right now is not forever. It's just where I'm at right now. And the journey is going to continue. And that curiosity and compassion can help me uh, take steps toward who God created me to be ultimately. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I think one of the other outcomes that I see in it is really delving deeper into your legacy. What, what do you see God leading you into? And, you know, we touch on that in seven pillars for a few pages, Mm -hmm. but there's just honestly not enough time in the amount of content you've got to learn at the beginning of this journey. Whereas the compassionate warrior gets you thinking more about what is the purpose of this journey? Because, you know, Christ didn't die for us to just live sin free, right? He died to bring us back in a relationship with God and to live with his, live for his glory and to find the fulfillment of life that comes from being other centered and not making it about me, but, but living in the kingdom that God has, has made us for. Yeah. And, and that's to me what the compassionate warrior is trying to help us live into is to say, what's the vision for my life? Not just, you know, free of my addictive behavior or, you know, sober from those things I used to do. But what is my sobriety for? What what is my healing for? What am I doing with it? How am I yeah. um, integrating it into my parenting and my marriage? And and what's God leading me into? And some of those are where you know the, I think in particular that warrior's way or the hero motif really helps because when you get right down to it, I think a lot of men have sensed at some point in their life that God has called them to something, called them to be a part of something to help um, change the world in some kind of way that that in our fear and shame and woundedness, we're just like, well, there's no way I could do that. Or who am I, you know, the shame factor sets in. But the truth is like, God's inviting us to partner with him to do those things. And and that will take kind of that leap into the unknown and a, a willingness to risk and not just risk to be free of my stuff, but a risk to like live in a new way with a new vision and purpose. And so I think it's kind of the other half of the story from Seven Pillars of, yeah, let's let's fix what's gotten broken, but then let's answer the question, mm-hmm. fixed for what purpose? Yeah. And I think you're really going to be led into some conversations about what does that look like for you? And, you know, for every man in the group, it'll be different, but I think every man will have an opportunity to think through what what is God calling me into and how do I have the faith to follow him wherever that leads me? Yep. So, yeah. I mean, and you already, you know, took the opportunity earlier to, uh, this time, please go purchase Compassionate Warrior, but uh, <laughs> let's just kind of, you know, set the stage here for what encouragements we have for why men should go through this. Um, you know, how, why would you tell them to go through this resource? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you and the name Compassionate Warrior, right? If we have, uh, if we have learned to be compassionate towards other people, but not to have compassion towards ourselves then I think we're missing the heart of Jesus, Hmm. right? Like we're not just supposed to have compassion for other people. Um, I mean, uh, I I talk about this a lot with clients that are in ministry. They, they apply like John 3 16 to the world around them, but they forget that like they are at the heart of that, Hmm. right? That like, that they are the one also that was so loved. And I think in this compassionate warrior journey, there's like, we, you know, as we're working through things, we do learn to have more empathy for the world around us, for our spouse, for our kids, for our parents, right? For our grandparents, we can learn to be compassionate towards them, knowing yeah. that they did the best that they could and they hurt us, right? Um, but I think the compassionate warrior helps you to have compassion towards yourself. And, um, and it really brings a light to things that you went through in the seven pillars, almost kind of like the New Testament brings to light some things that you probably read in the Old Testament. All right, I see you. Right? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that'll preach. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's, it's this thing where it's like, oh, wait a second, the Old Testament was about mercy and grace. Yeah. Right? Uh, like, it was about all of this stuff. And, and so I think even going to Compassionate Warrior, it, it will bring insight to things that you did in Seven Pillars and say, oh my gosh, like, I, I was looking at that so narrowly, but now I see that it was about like so much more than that. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, the, the compassion that you have towards yourself, um, the, 
the the unpacking at a deeper level of stuff you've already been working on. Um, but why would you do it? Because you're in a sanctification process and this work's never done. And we just need more tools to figure out how to do this well, right? Like I might, I might feel like I'm getting dialed in how to be the father of a 10 year old, but I've never been the father of an 11 year old. <laughs> That's right. Right. And guess what? That's right around the corner. Mm-hmm. And so I may know, I may feel like I'm doing okay in my recovery at 44, but I've never been in recovery at 45. Mm-hmm. And like, so to, to continue this work for the rest of our life, um, the Compassionate Warrior helps us to do that well and to, to change our lens. Yeah, I, I think it answers the question, you know, if, if Pure Desire says that recovery is a two to five year process, but let's say I do uh, Sexual Integrity 101 and I do a Seven Pillars of Freedom group and I'm a little over a year, what now? Well, Compassionate Warrior is going to take you up to about the two-year mark of continuing to lean into your story. And when we say it's a two- to five-year process, we don't mean it takes that long to get free, but it, it really comes down to relationships. And for those who are married, mm-hmm. I think that's the you know first relationship we think of, that, that finding new footing and a new way of life for the long haul in a marriage, that's where that two- to five-year, like... It takes time to transform those ways of relating to one another, of of showing enough consistency that a spouse is able to work through some of their pain and betrayal and find a, a really a new healthy rhythm that lasts. And Compassionate Warrior is a huge part, I think, of addressing those relationship mm-hmm. wounds where Seven Pillars was so much about you and your story appropriately so because you needed to get out of the struggle or the pattern you were in. Um, but the compassionate warrior takes you into that next phase. So it's, it's just such a needed piece of the journey. And it yeah. almost feels like, well, otherwise you are left a little bit to choose your own ending where this one, I think directs you more to it. And then my hope would be for guys that at the end of the compassionate warrior, they do have a vision to say, man, I, I do feel like I've got enough healing under my belt that I want to help other men. I want to lead a seven pillars group. I want to launch conquer at my church. I want to take some young men through sexual integrity 101 because you, you feel like that track record is there to a point you're, you're now moving forward to help others. And some men might discover that earlier. You know, I know we do have guys that do seven pillars once and it's clicking and they're loving it. And they're now leading a, a group of seven pillars guys. But I think it's maybe even more common for a guy at the end of a first round of seven pillars to say, man, I, mm-hmm. I still feel like I've got a lot to learn. I don't know yeah. if I should be leading one of these groups yet. Um, and compassionate warrior is just that natural next step to keep yeah. diving in. And again, to then keep that perspective of so that we can pay our healing forward so that we can see yeah. how does God want to use us in the lives of other people. Yeah. I think too, just going through new resources is always helpful. You know, if you've been through seven pillars two or three times, like maybe you've kind of gotten to certain patterns and, you know, you can also slip into unhealthy patterns in recovery, you know, like that, that will happen. And so I think that having something new and fresh and something that you haven't gone through before, I think sometimes can kick something loose you didn't know was there. And with the new framework too, I think it's so helpful. And also I think the superhero odyssey is probably one of the coolest things ever. So you should probably just buy it (laughs) and go through it for that. Even if it's just those two chapters. Uh, obviously kidding go through the whole thing um, and we'll have all that stuff in the show notes of how to get the resource the kit online groups local groups where you can search those but uh, Bob man thank you for your time it's good to have you back on the show and really appreciate the um, like uh, using this tool that you found a lot of success with your clients and then putting it in this resource to make it available to even more people appreciate the work man thank you